Welcome back to the Mac Music Review Experience. I'm your host, Mac, from Mac Music Review, and today it's time to talk about the 10 best albums of 2010. 2010 was an interesting year in the mythology of these top 10 videos. I have now done, including this one, all of the years, a top 10 video for every single album in the year 2010s, you know, from 2010 all the way to 2020, um, including 2021, 2022. So I will link the playlist down in the description if you want to check out all those other top 10 videos for the you know year end list. I have to do songs and I do albums. I haven't done the songs video for 2010, but I will you know eventually. But uh, without further ado, let's just hop into the honorable mentions and then hop into the top 10. First honorable mention is the Tron soundtrack by Daft Punk. Oh my goodness, Daft Punk turned up for the Tron soundtrack, believe it or not. It's actually really killer, um, very underrated in the Daft Punk discography. I think it should be talked about along, among their other albums. Good stuff all around. Thief by Destroyer is a pretty solid Destroyer project. Absolutely not one of his best, not one of my favorites, but still has plenty of solid music from an extremely consistent artist. Um, this is Happening by LCD Sound System is an album that most people absolutely love from 2010. It's a lot of people's favorite album of 2010, if not in their top three or top five of that year. But it's just not personally my thing. His style of this very long, drawn out house music. I'm just not a huge house music person in general. But if you do mess with house music, this is an absolutely essential album. Um, one of the most essential house and dance records of the entire decade, honestly. Um, the Listening by Lights is one of my favorite pop albums from 2010, and it's pretty obscure. Not a lot of people are familiar with Lights or this album. I'm not a huge fan of the artist in general, but I think this album is her best work, and it's good stuff. Uh, Who Can Know It by Showbread, um, an album I'm not super familiar with, but it sounded really, really good. Just a brief shout out, throwing that out there. Check them out. Showbread, kind of a very obscure niche artist in the world of like more underground Christian metal slash whatever I don't know what genre they fit into specifically another Christian release the generous Mr. Lovewell by Mercy Me a great album from them maybe one of their best I don't know exactly it's a really good release in the world of Christian contemporary music absolutely check it out and then lastly have one on me by Joanna Newsom another album that will be very high on a lot of people's best albums of 2010 not personally one of my favorites I haven't really gotten into it maybe in the future I'll come around more to this album but right now I just haven't given it enough time I haven't sunk my teeth in enough to be one of my absolute favorites of the year and that's it as far as the honorable mentions go let's hop into the top 10 starting with number 10. Number 10 is a Newsboys album, believe it or not. That's crazy to me that Newsboys made it onto this list. Uh, Born Again Miracles Edition, specifically the Miracles Edition. I have the CD for this one, and it was one of the first CDs I ever owned. I listened to it like crazy. To this day, I still enjoy the album. I listened to the whole thing recently, or most of the thing recently. I think the slower tracks are good. I think the more upbeat tracks, specifically in the first half of the album, really hold a lot of weight. I think lyrically, they are being a little bit more creative and adventurous than they are in their future Michael Tate Newsboys. Like, old Newsboys was very quirky and fun, and then they lost their quirkiness and their fun as they evolved with the Michael Tate era Newsboys. But this album still has a little bit of that quirkiness, a little bit of that fun, and the slower, more profound songs actually do hit kind of hard. So, yeah, it's not going to be for everyone. If you're not a Christian, if you're not a fan of Christian music, I don't think this album will have any appeal, if I'm being honest. But I personally do uh, still really enjoy this Newsboys album. Another Christian release, Tonight by Toby Mac, is an album that I have a lot of fun with. Uh, once again, I will say the same things. I, I think Toby Mac more or less has stayed very consistent in the world of Christian contemporary music. I think he has continued to put out good music, even past Tonight. But I think Tonight might be the best album he released in the 2010s, and just one of his best albums overall. It's got some really fun energy with songs like Hey Devil and Tonight. It's got some good pop tracks. And it's got some really good, more slow, emotional, worshipful moments like City on Our Knees. Like, I mean, it really just showcases Toby Mac's talents absolutely across the board. And it's also just a lot of fun. I don't know if you know this, but I have never been a Beach House fan. Their music has never really appealed to me until Once Twice Melody, their 2022 release, which I thought was extremely solid. It didn't have enough staying power 
and specific appeal to me to make it onto my list of the best albums of 2022. It may have been an audible mention in that video. If it wasn't, I'm going to give it an audible mention now because it is a very solid release. But I'm glad that album got me into the band a little bit more because Teen Dream is a great album. Like, this is just really solid music. It's kind of dreamy, as the title suggests. Good vocals, good music. It's just a good album. I really don't have a lot to say about it other than that. Check it out. I love this album. This is an album that has a big part in my formative music listening years of me like getting into music becoming a music nerd was just me like blasting Taurus history from track one to track 10 all glorious 33 minutes of it very short very concise alternative pop release that just has you know wall-to-wall -wall bangers essentially the only song I'm not crazy about is I Can Talk. I think all the other songs are really, you know, they bring something to the table. They may not be amazing, they may not be perfect, but there is just something for everybody here. And um, if you like one track, you really will love all of the tracks also. Um, sounds a little bit counterintuitive to say that what I said that and then saying that, but that's how I feel about this album. It's fantastic. Check it out. This is the newest release in terms of my music listening experience for this top 10 list, meaning this is the album that I have spent the least amount of time with on this entire list because I didn't grow up listening to it. I, I, I say that there's an, the album after this one also, I haven't listened to a ton, but I, I still have not really fully sunk my teeth into Beautiful Things by Gunger, but it is an absolutely gorgeous album. Absolutely fantastic Christian music, very lush, beautiful instrumentation, beautiful worshipful lyrics. It really has its heart in the right place in terms of its faith-centered lyrical content. And it's just a just a gorgeous record that will continue to reap more benefits the more I listen to it. I'm excited to give this one many more listens after today, and I highly recommend you check it out. This is another album which I have not fully sunk my teeth into. I can't fully grasp its magnificence, but I really do think it is a magnificent record. And that is one of the reasons it's so high on this list, and that is High Violet by The National incredible band. The National has so many great albums, great vocals, of course, from the lead singer, great music, great lyrics, and this album is just them at their most bombastic, their most huge, their most just just screaming to the sky anthems, even if he's not literally screaming. It's just got so much passion behind it, and I absolutely love just the energy of this album and what it is going for and the sound and the individual songs are just fantastic throughout the entire album. Um, it's an album that may be, if not one of their best, their absolute best. Speaking of career best albums by really fantastic bands, let's talk about Congratulations by MGMT because Congratulations is really fantastic. Like, like I said, I think this is their best album. Like, my favorite songs from MGMT kind of come from their first album, you know, talking about Time to Pretend and Kids and the Electric Feel, all their big bangers. But Congratulations, I think, is the probably the better album. I think it's just great from first track to the last track. It's kind of experimental. They're doing different things. they got some really long tracks. They've got some trippy instrumentation. They've got some weird stuff going on. they got some instrumental stuff going on. They've got the song, the title track. They've got Flash Delirium. It is just full of lots of interesting stuff and something that you need to give multiple listens to because there's just a lot to unpack here. Even though the album is not super long, uh, definitely check this one out if you haven't heard it. Welcome to the world of the Plastic Beach. I was listening to this album a couple hours ago, going for a walk. Fantastic. Uh, the concept album is taken to a really great... Uh, extent with this thing like they really did go for this tropical beach island kind of vibe on like the entire album with the sound effects the guest features on this thing are fantastic they add so much to the album um gorillas always basically always has been a big guest feature type of artist in this album once again talking about career best i think this is the best gorillas album i don't even think it's that even close of a race i think this is probably definitely their best release and easily one of the best albums of 2010 yeah, my beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. This is probably too low for a lot of people at number two because a lot of people think this is the best album that Kanye West has ever made. No, it's not the best Kanye West album. It's the best album ever made. You, you guys, if I had a nickel for every time I watched a YouTube video or and somebody on the video said it's the best album ever or my favorite album of all time, then I would be like, 
I would have some money, man. I would have a few dollars at least because people love this album and I understand why it's fantastic. It's fantastic. I don't need to say a whole lot about it because I've already reviewed it on the channel. I will link my review for this in the description. Anyway, let's hop on to number one. That's right, everyone. My favorite album of 2010, the Grammys got it right. This is, I think this is the only time my number one album of any year is also the Grammys pick, but it's The Suburbs by Arcade Fire. Um, the craziest part of this, the craziest thing about putting this at number one is I don't even think this is my favorite Arcade Fire album. I'm pretty sure Neon Bible is my favorite Arcade Fire album. And then Funeral is also fantastic, but I absolutely love this thing. I think the songs are just fantastic. Um, there's a lot of them. There's like 15 full length songs. 14 or 15 full length songs. I think the lyrics are great. I think the music is great. I think the vibes and the tones and the feelings and the emotions behind that album are fantastic. And the album makes me feel a way that is, and you know, this is always what I say about my number one of each year. It's an album that makes me feel some way that you really can only get from listening to that album. It's an experience you can't really have in any other regard. And um, it, that really is the, feel, the feeling I get when I listen to The Suburbs, Barricade Fire. So check it out. It's a great album. And that's all I have for you guys today. Um, please check out these albums if you're interested. I believe they're all fantastic. Um, I want to know what some of your favorite albums are that were released in the year 2010. Should anything be higher on my list? Should anything be lower on my list? What albums did I miss? Let me know, in the, either in the honorable mentions or in my top 10, what amazing albums in 2010 have I not mentioned? Because I'm sure there are a lot. 2010 is a year where I feel like there are a lot of blind spots for me, or like I said, with LCD Sound System and Joanna Newsom, artists that I really haven't given enough time and energy to really get into their records because they're kind of beefier albums. But let me know, what did I miss? What did I get wrong? And some of your favorite releases from 2010 in the description, and have a great rest of your day.